everybody, my name is RTS and welcome to a special video this time of Bendy and the Dark Revival. Dude, it's back! Kind of. So, they released a new update which contains some new content. The archives, if you guys don't know what that is. Basically, in Bendy and Ink Machine, there was a secret chapter you could play which is like a museum of all the things in the game and I guess kind of a look behind the scenes. Alright. Anyway. Let's start the game up and hop into it, okay? Hey, there we go. Ah, it's been so long since I heard this sound. Joe Drew Studios. Here we go. We're back. Oh, well, that's a lot of text. <laughs> In every single language possible. Okay. Bendy and the Dark Revival. Ah, the familiar sound. Okay, so once we click begin, I think we should have a new option. There we go. Archives. So that's the secret chapter of the game. I don't really know what this is. I just assume that it's kind of like been an ink machine, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> hey, Bendy. What's up, bud? Okay, something's dripping. I can hear something dripping. The archives. Oh, <laughs> I missed the text. There we go. The archives. Welcome to the archives. Bending the Dark Arrival is a filled oh is filled with numerous characters that each had a critical role to play in the progression of the game. Here in the archives, you will learn a little bit more about them. In an up close and personal way, feel free to explore. Yeah. So it is kinda like that. Oh. I wonder if we're gonna get different versions of these games, like early versions. If there were any. Bendy. The iconic imp was redesigned for Dark Rival to stand out a bit from his traditional cartoon appearance by giving him a suit and clothes. That was unique in his appearance, having a suit and a bow tie. Nice. Cool. He posed some minor challenges, specifically creating a face that supported the classic bendy eerie smile, but still managed to be heartwarming in the right conditions. He's a fan favorite, so his design had to be just right. And I think they nailed it. Like, it looks really good in the 3D form which we haven't seen before, was always just 2D in Bend and Ink Machine. So cool. During production, we originally envisioned Bendy to talk with a series of cute squeaks to contrast the dark, low voice of the ink theme. But this turned out to be very distracting and the idea was cramped pretty early on. So I think Bendy, yeah, just doesn't talk at all. We can only smack him with our pipe and he makes like a squealing noise. Or like a whistle noise, I mean. So yeah, I forgot to mention the way you can access the archives is if you complete a game only then can you access it. It pops up in the menu like it did before. Okay, so let me just walk around and see what else we can find. We can read about all of these characters, but... Ooh. Hey, bud. The Butcher Gang. So is it me or did we not see much of the Butcher Gang at all? In the game, they weren't that present. Charlie was pretty present. <laughs> I'm surprised she's with the Butcher Gang. Even though she wasn't really confirmed, she was kind of rejected. But yeah, I remember you. You little scamp. Uh, you were so annoying to play for. <laughs> she kept on popping up and jump scaring us each time. It was so unpredictable. Yeah, Barley, Charlie, and Edgar, the three original members of the Butchering Gang, were formed from the Ink Machine, de deconstructed by Alice, Angel for body parts, and bond together to stay alive with sneak attacks and her prey. That's kind of lore that I didn't know. That's interesting. In Dark Arrival, we meet an artificial fourth member of the gang, Carly, the Ghost Girl. Although when you begin to examine her closely, Carly appears to be only a shell with perhaps someone inside. Okay, that's pretty dark and not good. Oh, she, I don't like how she's looking at us. You guys see that? I can't remember if we can crouch in the game. I apparently cannot do that here, but yeah, she's looking at us. Uh, me no like that, you know? It's nightmare fuel. Okay, at least these guys aren't. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to read everything. I, I did. You can pause the video if you want to read more about these guys. Maybe I'm gonna read something that's more interesting, but yeah, I'm just... <laughs> I'm bad at reading. Hey, Wilson. Yeah, so that's the main antagonist. You guys probably already know, that's that's like a spoiler-free area. Or, I mean, it's not spoiler-free, but you... <sighs> whatever. You already know what's going on, so should be good. Okay, I do want to read about Audrey, the character we play as. Audrey is a kind-hearted rogue with courage, determination, some flaws, and a deep, dark past. To make our story work, we needed a newcomer to the cartoon studio world. And Audrey was the perfect fresh eyes to help experience the adventure. The experience the adventure. I think there's a mistake in that. <laughs> From day one production, we knew that if people didn't connect with Audrey by the end of the game, the game itself wouldn't be successful. Fortunately, she turned out to be quite memorable indeed. 
and sends out from the other members of the cast. Okay. Oh, that's, um, I forgot his name. Dude, it's been so long. Porter, there we go. The dude that gave us, like, teleporting abilities. Pretty cool. Oh, Heidi. Yeah, I think she allowed us to fast travel. Yeah, the pit. Or, I don't know what it was called. The ink something. The ink machine. Look at that. So, did we get to take a look at the ink machine in the original game? I can't remember. I think it was at the beginning of the game. Like, the intro and then also in the secret ending. Right? Oh, no, it was at the ending. Right. At the top of the, like, balcony. When we were fighting... Ship Ahoy, right? Yeah. The Ink Machine. Designed by Thomas Connor of the Gen Corporation. Sold by Joey Drew. Retrieved by Arch Gate. And once again, reclaimed by Gent. <laughs> Going back and forth. The Ink Machine's next adventure is a mystery. Alright, so it seems like we're gonna have a bit more things going on in the future. Oh! Okay, we'll come back to these guys in just a minute. Or actually, we'll just check out now. Yeah, how Bendy transformed into this form or actually merged with Audrey. You know what's kind of funny is that this model is kind of the same one from the Ink Machine game. Bendy Ink Machine. So does that mean that Bendy transformed or somehow fused with Audrey when he transformed into this version? Betty, a faithful maid among the other things to Wilson. Joey Drew, the man, the legend, the memory. Ooh, hey, these guys. We got Henry's, Henry Stein, the cycle breaker, okay, <laughs> the watchers hate him, then we got Allison from Go, and Tom, hey Tom, Tom is Allison's silent protector, and the only Boris clone involved in the main story. Where is Boris the wolf? Rumor has it that during the events of the game, Boris, experiencing, Boris is experiencing a dark survival story of his own. Huh. Yo, do you reckon... Bruh, it would be so cool if we got like a Boris DLC because if you remember we did some hacking in the game and we did find Boris in various areas I think it was like two occasions One time in the beginning of the game in the ink world and then in the gym building in the vents That was cool, dude That'd be so cool if they did a DLC, you know Boris story And we got the the real world, I guess. I don't know. Still kind of hard to tell. I mean, I think Audrey was the one that... It's not real. She was made from ink, right? Everything else was real, like Wilson? Audrey. The unknowing daughter of an animated pioneer. Audrey has blocked out a memory of her past after losing her father. But his role in her life was not over. A talented animator and artist, her skills landed her a jab at Arch Gate. Was it fate that led her to reunite with Joey Drew's machine? The machine of her birth. Or was it planned? But yeah, I think Wilson had a lot to do with it. Because he knew something. He knew something. Haunted by an impossible shadow of Nathan Arch. Wilson sought to achieve something that would make his father proud. By luck, he stumbled upon the ink machine and was able to become the cartoon world's new master. Holding the cycle in place, he continued his experiment. Experiments that could not fully be realized until the ignium was purged. Purged, completely deleted. However, unnaturally entering to and from the ink realm has taken a toll on Wilson's physical being, slowly robbing him of his health. Ah, so that's what it was. I thought he got like in an accident or something. <laughs> like, you know, the typical villain thing. Like a pss, cut eye. I think that's what phasing through or in and out of the ink world did him. Huh. Okay. Yeah, we cannot walk here. Oh, we can't. Okay. Weird. Bendy kind of... Who put this here? Are we not supposed to see this? Yeah. Like, we cannot walk up here. Huh. That's funny. Yo, do you reckon we could find a wandering Bendy in this area? It was a thing in Bendy and Ink Machine in the archives. Huh. Oh, that was creepy. I thought it was somebody standing there. Like, there is, but, you know, a threat. It still looks creepy from far. Okay. Audrey's donut. No, you can't have it. Aw oh, man, I wanted to. Go with coffee as well, that would have been perfect. Nathan Arch. Yeah, so as I said, I'm not gonna read everything. You guys can pause if you do want to read it. I'm just gonna explore and see what we got, you know what I mean? Even though I feel like we explored pretty much everything. Oh goodness. 
Hey guys. Oh, how did we miss Sammy, dude? Bruh. Uh, Sam boy. Hey, bud. The famous music composer of the studio is Sammy Lawrence, aka the most favorite character of everybody. <laughs> Originally had a slightly larger role in the story of Dark Rival. Kind of, but also not really. I mean, we didn't get to see much of Sam at all, except for, I don't know, like the end of the game? Yeah, because chapter 2 of Ben and Equation was all about Sammy. I don't think he got a bigger role, but in a story already filled with so many characters, making them all play a meaningful part became a challenge. It was ultimately sidelined in favor of telling a more coherent story. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. He was ultimately sidelined. I see. Yeah, I thought so, because he wasn't really present. Although it is interesting to know that Sammy Lawrence appears to have mastered the flow ability in Ben and Ink Machine. Oh. Long before Potter and Audrey could weld it. So where did he get it then? Where did he get the the flow ability? Huh. So is that how he got around? I guess that explains everything about Sammy in uh, Ben and Ink Machine, because he can literally face through walls. I mean, that must be a higher level of a flow. If you can face through walls. Alice Angel. The self-appointed queen of the studio, Alice Angel, is one of the most memorable faces in the Benny world. Forever lost in a tide of insanity, she is an absolute delight to write for as a character. An angel with many layers, time will only tell if the sinky tempest will ever reappear. Guess we'll see. Amok, ruler of a super cult. Lord Amok illustrates how the world of the Ink had continued to develop into different societies deep within the darkest places. Though he was weak in a fight, his name was will simply never die. <laughs> he was pretty weak. I think we almost one shot him. Oh boy. Shipahoy. Yeah, the mended invention of Wilson. This dude. Like father like son, huh? Doesn't really seem to fit in the universe of Benny anyway. Cause I don't think there are any like humanoid character or human characters in Benny World. There's like a wolf. I don't know what Alice is. I at first I thought she was like a cat. In the early theories, Bendy also is not a human, obviously. Um, so that's kind of weird. Maybe that's why it wasn't so successful. King Widow. Ugh. I thought it was a queen at first. All right. I don't like this guy. And Lurker. Or Steve, as he became to be known. He was one of the friendly dudes. Like, an ink person, but still a friendly. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, what am I stepping in? Bro. Ink poop. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. It really ain't. I would like to hack this game and hack outside of walls or something to see if there's any any hidden wandering bendies, but that would take a long time, so I don't know. <laughs> hey, can we try? Hey. Where's the food at? Huh? I'm hungry. I'm hangy. Exit. Okay, so this takes me out, right? Out to the menu. Okay. Benny's pointing to the exit. He already wants me to leave. I'll see how it is. Artists rest. Okay, so now was Benny and Dark Rival Archives. Dude, as I said, I would love to see a DLC in this game. I, I do kind of miss the universe of this game and just hanging out and, you know, finding out more about the story, especially Boris. So hopefully we'll get something. But for now, this is it. A quick little, I don't know, nostalgia, I guess. <laughs> Hasn't been that long, but still. It's been a while, so hope you guys enjoyed this episode, this short little sweet episode, finding out more about these characters and uh, developing behind them. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, give this video a like, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Bye!